Greetings fellow traveling. Today I want to discuss the idea of our true power as individuals. I, uh, I had a moment while I was thinking about the allegory of Jonah and the fish, or Jonah and the whale. So I decided to read it and see what stuck out to me, if anything. It was very interesting. As I, as I went over the story, I'm not going to go over the whole thing with you. Uh, this is not a religious rant at all. It's simply me being honest about what I see in the story. Uh, I do want to put a disclaimer out there. I myself do not look at the Bible as a historical text. I believe it's just as many other works of the world. It's a moral. It's a story with a moral. And with many more to that. With that being said... In the first chapter, it talks about how Jonah ended up getting into the mouth of the fish. And he was fleeing the city and paid to board a ship. While he was on the ship, he went to sleep. While he was sleeping, the, I guess the ship master, we will call him, or as was referred to in the Bible, him and his mates realized that they were in the midst of a storm. Now, mind you, Jonah paid to be a passenger. But for some reason, when the storm came, the shipmaster didn't make the decision to go to God or to find out what to do. He went down to the lower level of the ship and woke up Jonah. And that stuck out to me. I'm like, all right, if you're the captain of the ship, why are you going to wake up Jonah? Well, it goes on to say that the master of the ship asked Jonah to reach out to his God, to pray to his God that those on the ship will not perish. I'm going to leave it at there for now. Because it struck me as odd that the one who controls the ship was not the one who was truly in his power. It was Jonah who was in his power, but Jonah didn't know it yet. Now, I, I bring this up because there's a rim rat painting that I really like, and it's Jesus on the Sea of Galilee in the midst of the storm. Him, 12 disciples, and the painting has rim rat. But I like that story because when Jesus and the disciples got mm -hmm. into that boat and they were in the midst of a storm, Jesus as well was asleep, just as Jonah was. However, they both had two different responses. When Jonah was woke up, and confronted with the storm he eventually abandoned the ship to save those on the ship because he felt the wrath was due to him Jesus on the other hand when he woke up he chilled he asked him like what why y'all worried about all this do y'all not know who y'all are I am paraphrasing and he calmed the seas and all the disciples like, what manner of man is this who has that kind of power? Now, I know that these are from two different books. We got the book of Jonah, and then we got uh, the storm. Storm and Sea of Galilee is in St. Luke. But the reason I like these two allegories is because when you look at it, there's nothing different in the story of us. See, we can operate in a space where we don't understand the power that we have, and then we maneuver like Jonah. In which we abandoned the situation, we abandoned the city. And then he got onto the boat. He abandoned ship. Ended up getting swallowed by the fish. It was like he had to go deeper and deeper and run further and further away from the power of God to understand that the power of God was truly within him. And he can operate from that. Then he doesn't have to run. It's interesting. Because if we look at Jesus, Jesus already knew who he was. He already knew, like, right? Son of God. God is within me. I control all this outside of me by controlling what's in me. I think that's a... Those are two beautiful parallels in showing how operating from different powers or from different positions in life can make the biggest situations small and the smaller situations big. To put that into a a more relative context, I think about myself. 
and I looked at certain uh, situations that I've had in life where I was scared to be confrontational. I will really talk myself out of confronting obvious issues with myself or with other people. And in doing so, I developed a habit of maneuvering or running away from situations that I could have easily confronted. I may have still left after I confronted the situation or the person. However, I'd have done it on my terms. But I was, I would like to say I was conditioned, but obviously I made a choice in my life that that was a better route to go, whether somebody told me to do that or not. So as I got older and I began stepping into my power of believing in who I was and I got tired, I genuinely got tired of believing that everyone else had more power than me, I stepped into it. This is, uh, I said about 15 years ago. Uh, it started a little bit, maybe closer to 20 years ago. Because it was baby steps. It wasn't like I jumped up and now all of a sudden I'm raising hell. Nah, it was baby steps. It was okay. This person is treating me this way. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to confront them about it. And when I begin to do that, I begin to see more patterns. Not only patterns in myself for the things I was letting slide that never had to, but I was also seeing the patterns of others. And they they weren't used to being checked. They weren't used to somebody confronting them or letting them know that they are moving incorrectly. And it showed me a whole new view of the world. I would like to say that that was uh, very helpful. I, I know it was helpful. And allow me to not only be true to who I am, but allow others to be true to who they are. Now, that does not mean that I will be friends with them. That does not mean that I will be around them and take whatever they give me simply because I understand. Nah. Nah. Understanding and acceptance are two completely different things. But I learned to not tolerate certain things for myself. And in doing so, I allow others to see what it looks like. Did they like it? No. That's all right. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I spent too long beating myself up about things that are outside of my control. But I begin to tolerate myself in a different way. Meaning, you know what? You may have went overboard with this. You may have reacted too strongly with that. But that's okay because you know what it looks like when you don't do anything for yourself when you don't stand strong for who you are and mind you at this point in my life God has always been there for me I, I'll honestly say that God has always showed up for me just as he does for you but in that moment I that period of my life is said like that I begin to see how powerful I was now, when I say powerful, I'm not saying I'm stronger than the next person or the next person is weaker than me. Not at all. I began to understand how much of an impact I could have in my media surroundings by simply standing tall in who I am. Now, this was still learning. It was quite a learning curve because I still hadn't recognized ego in myself. Just being honest, I hadn't. So that was a whole nother set of obstacles coming along with that situation. But going back to the, the original topic of power, when I read these allegories, Jesus in the Sea of Galilee, Jonah, I begin to not only reflect on myself, but I begin, I begin to think of others as well. Like every opportunity, every aspect of our lives really come down to what power are we stepping in? Some situations we must be Jonah because we don't understand how much power we have and we must go deeper into it to understand what we're rising out of, what we're being uplifted out of, what we're being heaved up from heaven, heaved in, lifted up from within, just as Jonah was lifted up from within the fish. But when we get to a position of power, of acceptance 
of knowing that we do have the ability to rise above any and all things, then for certain situations, we take on or personify that idea of Jesus. Well, we know no obstacle is too big. Well, we know there's not even a reason to worry about certain things. Because we know it works out as long as we control our inner world and we control how we respond to these things. Now, this may, this, this may come across as very abstract, and I get it. I get it. This is simply my testimony. Hopefully, it reaches one or helps one. Because honestly, in this world that we live in, we have access to so much information and so many different things in the external world. It can be difficult at times to settle within ourselves and understand the role that we play. Understand the, uh, the persona that we embody. Because throughout the day, we may be Jonah. We may be Jesus. Those positions could switch any moment. This is simply a reminder to you to know that no matter what you are, you're always operating in your power. Never let anybody take that away from you. And if it does happen, never be scared to reclaim that. Because you owe it to yourself. And in doing that for yourself, you are magnifying the glory of God, creator of the universe, the internal light that is within you. And it's nothing more beautiful than that. I think that's a good place to leave it for now. Send a tremendous love out to you. Until next time, be blessed. And please, don't forget to smile.